Hey Weather Warriors, come on in. We've got a potential for severe weather here in the southeastern and eastern United States as we have a powerful jet stream that's starting to scoop across the United States. In this video, I'm going to talk about whether this is going to be a big outbreak or nothing to worry about. True or false based off the hype that you've heard on the social medias and on TV and all that. So that's where I go over this video. Now, before we begin, if you like daily forecast updates, extreme weather event breakdowns, much more detail than you would see on TV, Click subscribe below, introduce yourself if you're new, and let me know what you think of these uh, true-false videos. Do you like this format? And uh, yeah, so we'll get right into it here. So this is going to be Wednesday and Thursday. So Wednesday the 5th and Thursday, February 6th. Now, what I've got here is the jet stream. We're going to look at this first. We're going to look at the composite reflectivity. Then I'm going to look at the top 15 similar weather events in history and how they turned out for this region right here. That's what we're gonna look at in a second. Really cool. So this is the jet stream. You can see that powerful jet starting to move into the southeastern United States. This is going to fuel and aid severe weather development, especially when you get divergence like that, stretching the air up above. That allows lift at the surface for storms. And then you also are getting a lot of wind shear. So you got 50, 60, 70 knots of wind blasting up in the upper levels. That's going to separate the updrafts from the precipitation shield. So imagine a thunderstorm right here. Your precipitation is going to kind of look like this, and it's going to fall farther away so that the updraft can keep building. That is what's going to aid this entire setup in the southeastern United States for severe weather. As you head towards Thursday now, this is around 1 p.m. on Thursday. You can see this big wave starts to move east. This energy comes out and lifts to the north. And look at that right there, 56, I mean, 110 knots in some of these areas towards, uh, you know, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, all the way out to Georgia. Now, the cold front's going to be a little bit farther ahead, but nonetheless, this is definitely indicative of strong lift and wind shear. Now, you might be wondering, why aren't there severe storms up here in the northeastern United States or in Canada or, you know, the northwest? The issue is it's too cold up there. When you have colder air, it's a lot more contracted. It doesn't hold as much moisture. So you have to go to areas where there's warmer sources of moisture, and that's going to be immediately along the Gulf of Mexico and the southeastern United States. And you're going to watch this kind of pinch out into the Carolinas on Thursday. So we'll look at that in a second here. We'll go over out into the, the high-resolution models here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the overview for the precipitation. So what we're going to look at is the general low pressure system here. So this is going to be Thursday afternoon. You can see things are getting going here in the southeastern United States. This is near Louisiana. Low pressure systems right there. Here's your cold front along that gradient. You can see that gradient, that thickness line. Essentially your average temperature in the atmosphere through multiple levels. Your rain to snow lines up here. So your best bet for severe weather, here's your warm front right here, is going to be along and south of that warm front right here, and along and ahead of that cold front right here. So your best severe weather threat going to be right in that region right there, especially as you get cl closer to that low pressure system where the upper level energy is the strongest. So looking uh, pretty uh, interesting there. And as we head towards Thursday and uh, Thursday afternoon here, this is 1 p.m. Thursday around 7 p.m., you can see the low pressure system kind of redevelops and that cold front moves to the east. So it's a big old line of storms. Now up here, it's going to be cooler. So I, even though it looks nasty up there, it's probably just going to be mostly heavy rain showers with tons of moisture getting fed into it, isolated thunderstorms. But the main threat for severe weather along a squall line will be in the southeastern United States. Uh, and that would be on Thursday. So let's look at this into better detail here. What I'm going to do is go out to Wednesday here, and what we're going to do is look at Wednesday at 1 p.m. So this is your moisture now. So we, for severe weather, this is, is going to be a boom or a bust. We have to look at our severe weather, or I mean our moisture, because this is big, uh, big time for these things. You can see, you know, even up here that there was a lot of uh, precipitation, but the moisture is a little bit lacking on Wednesday. So... You can see that the dew point, 60 degrees plus, 60, 65 or so, very widespread in this region right here. And that's typically what you want for severe weather is dew points like that. So you can see these uh, wind barbs. This is essentially means the wind's coming out of the south. So something like this would mean that it's coming out of the north. And you can see winds out of the north up here, winds out of the south right here. There's probably a front right in, in between there. And you can see that moisture cut off right behind the cold front, delivers cold, dry air. 
So that moisture does cut off, and you can see that front sitting up right here. So around 1 p.m. on Wednesday, your best bet for severe weather will be in this moisture pool along and ahead of this cold front, kind of in this region right here. And then as you head towards uh, overnight here, it uh, you know to continues to move to the east. And uh, what you're going to look at is the upper levels here. So look at the jet stream. See the jet stream's kind of out of the southwest. Lots of wind shear here, 50 to 60 knots. But look how it kind of goes along the cold front. You know, the jet stream, uh, let me look at that again. The jet stream is kind of looking like this. It's kind of going along the cold front. And when you get that, that really dramatically lowers the tornado threat, but increases the squall line and damaging wind threat. The reason being is when you get storms to develop, they kind of develop like popcorn initially, isolated cells. For tornadoes, you want isolated supercells because you can get circulation within the storm. Uh, the storm can kind of generate its own circulation. But what happens when the jet stream flattens out along that cold front, when it goes along the cold front? Well, what happens is you get storms that develop. It's aiding its lift. So you get tons of storms that develop all at once sometimes. And then they kind of merge together because they're developing along the cold front. The cold front's your source of lift. That jet stream is going in the same direction as the front so it kind of flattens the storms out so what happens is it'll flatten out and you get this big line of rain essentially a squall line so what i'm forecasting with this type of look is a big squall line for the day wednesday and into thursday as this moves to the east the hail and tornado threat pretty low but with the wind shear with the strong wind shear and the southeast winds you could just get just enough circulation within that squall line to get a little bit of a kink a couple of places in the squall line and so what you'll get is these rain wrapped uh, brief little tornadoes that develop within the squall line again not a whole lot not a whole heck of a lot but we could definitely see a couple of those on wednesday as this moves to the east on thursday watch what happens here so this is overnight now on wednesday you can see that front moves to the east. And as we go towards uh, Thursday, we'll go Thursday at 4 p.m., you can see that this front is way off to the east now in uh, Georgia, parts of Florida, and all the way up into the Carolinas. So this is basically where your best threat for severe weather is going to be on Thursday. Again, the best threat on uh, uh, you know Wednesday, kind of in that region, best bet Thursday within this region. But there's going to be severe weather in between as well overnight. But this is going to be mostly for the daytime stuff, what I'm talking about here. And the best bet for th tornadoes on uh, Thursday, probably going to be within this region where you have the highest amount of moisture. And there's a little bit of a uh, bend back here. You can see the front kind of bends just a little bit, and the, the upper levels might actually cross it a little bit more. So your best bet for tornadoes would be in that area, but still pretty low for the most part. going to be mostly a squall line. Instability is another thing we look at. If you look at the instability here, We'll go out to Thursday. What I'm going to do after this is show you those top 15 analogs. So stay tuned for that. It's pretty cool. Uh, cool thing there. So let's go back to Thursday here. And we're going to go towards uh, 4 p.m. on Thursday. And you can see the instability. Really, what for severe weather, you want about 500 to 1,000 for severe weather at the minimum threshold. And you're starting to get those values within this region right here. So your best bet, like I said, is immediately along and ahead of that front where the best moisture and instability are lining up. You talk about the wind shear above this thing, and we have tons of it. So I'd say uh, you know, you're going to get a decent amount of severe weather in this region. But again, mostly going to be, uh, for the most part, early on. You know, your, your threat for tornadoes and hail are going to be a little bit higher farther to the northwest where early on the storms are kind of, you know, those popcorn uh, supercells as I was talking about. But as they merge and they quickly will, as they merge, they'll move to the east and it'll become much more of a wind threat for places farther to the east. So look out for that. And that includes, uh, you know, Mississippi, uh, Alabama and uh, parts of Florida here on uh, overnight on Thursday. So plenty of instability. Now, you got such a strong jet stream that even with like 500 cape, it might actually offset it because of the jet stream so strong. You might actually get some isolated severe weather in Tennessee and northern Mississippi. Now, let's go a day later here. We'll go overnight. You can see that actually moves into Mississippi overnight. And then we'll go a day later. This is Thursday at 4 p.m. And you can see the instability is really lacking on Thursday. Uh, a little bit into the Carolinas, but 
really the best bet's going to be here in Florida, like I was talking about. Best tornado threat, best hail threat, and best wind threat's going to be in that region. But like I said, I think this is going to be a 90% wind threat. So 90% of the reports are probably going to be wind with this thing. And the best bet going to be within this region right here on Thursday. Again, there is a little bit of cape. You can see about 250 to 500, maybe some areas a little bit higher uh, on this model up farther to the north. But because the wind shear is so strong, let's look at that jet stream real quick. Look at the jet stream. We're talking even in that region, 80, 90 miles an hour near and below the jet. Farther to the west, obviously, it's stronger. There is so much wind shear with this thing. You look at the low-level jet. So this is 850. This is just off the ground. near the. Uh, so this is kind of uh, negating friction because you have friction like plants, trees, buildings, and all, you know, geography things. Uh, this is just off the ground, so this is kind of a better uh, indicator for flow just above the surface. And this is good for you know, looking at flow from the Gulf. So there's a lot of warm, moist air in the Gulf, and you can see it's getting transported from uh, the Gulf into uh, Florida, you know, parts of Georgia, South and North Carolina on the day on Thursday. So no shortage of moisture and wind shear within this region. And that really could offset the lack of instability on the day on Thursday. Even if you have 500 Cape, I think with that wind shear, with that moisture, you're still going to get some isolated severe weather up in this region right here from North Carolina down into South Carolina and into Georgia. A much more widespread type of event will occur in parts of Southern Georgia into Florida where the moisture and instability is a little bit stronger. So that's the general look. We'll look at the reflectivity real quick. Then we'll go over and look at the top 15 events. I think those are really fun. It's kind of a, a different angle. We're not just looking at models. We're looking at some similar events in the past. So if you look at Wednesday, this is uh, around uh, 1 p.m. on Wednesday. Nothing a whole lot, but you can see those isolated little cells blown up in Louisiana, parts of western Louisiana and parts of Arkansas. Then as we go towards 4 p.m., a lot more widespread now as the front moves to the east, and uh, that jet stream starts kicking in and fueling moisture. And you can see around Thursday, around 7 p.m., big clusters, lines of storms. Now, this is the 4 cam NAM, and this is not the best model for this reflectivity stuff. Uh, I'll go into that on another uh, another day, but you know we'll just use that uh, kind of as an example here, and we'll see how it does. But you know, overall, that looks pretty good. I think it's going to be more linear than what this shows, more of a line. But this is uh, Thursday, and then as you can see, Thursday night kind of weakens a little bit as the instability weakens. Thursday night into, uh, thir or excuse me, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Now, Thursday afternoon, you can see this thing moves to the east, and that moisture fetch, that low-level jet, really starts to increase, and you can see tons of thunderstorms here. Now, is it a big severe weather event? Again, I'm not quite seeing a severe weather outbreak with this thing. Nothing to panic about. Uh, probably mostly a slight, maybe an enhanced type of risk. Main threat's going to be wind with this type of event. Hail and tornado threat extremely low with this type of event. But you can see lots of moisture, lots of wind, and I really do think along this entire thing, it's going to be gusty winds. But where you get your intense thunderstorms, you'll get downdrafts that maybe enhance those winds. Instead of 30 or 40 miles an hour, it's up to 60, maybe even 70 miles an hour in some areas. Thursday night, this moves to the east, and uh, you can see it still holds its strength with that powerful low-level jet that's blasting into the Carolinas. So pretty, pretty impressive with that wind shear there. Now, let's look at the past several events. And these are... Uh, the past, or no, this is the top 15 analogs. So this is the top 15 similar events to what I think this event will be like. And here's what it looks like. You can see that for severe weather, you're talking one or more reports. The you know 15 events, 40 to 60% of them had severe weather within this region right here. So this includes eastern uh, Louisiana all the way out to about western you know, parts of Alabama with that core being in that area. This looks pretty good. I mean, this is, looks pretty much like my forecast. Like I said, I think the best at, bet for uh, severe weather on Wednesday going to be within that region right there. Again, mostly a wind event. How about all of the wind? Or this is going to be the hail reports. So how did the hail reports do? This is the past 15 events. How many you know had severe hail reports? You can see it's a lot less. Only about 20 to 30%, and it's mostly farther to the west so keep that in mind again this is kind of accounting for uh, you know storms earlier on in the storm events they probably started off super cellular so you can see that kind of move to the northwest a little bit your best hail threat going to be on the western side 
wind threat, you can see it's farther on the eastern side. So when storms merge together, they kind of form a squall line. You get a bigger wind threat. And you can see it's much higher with the wind here. And then as we go towards the tornadoes, not very high either. But uh, kind of in between, you're going to get some, some brief spin-ups, some brief rain wrap type of events. How about the snow threat for uh, Wednesday? You can see generally two to four inches. I've been kind of uh, downplaying this region right here because it's busted a lot this winter. Those models have not ha handled that area well. Even though they're showing six to ten inches, I'm forecasting, like I said, about three to six inches within this region. And uh, most events, analogs, about two to four inches within that region. So that's that. And then uh, Thursday, you can see the top 15 analogs. You know, this includes all threats. Very high within this region right here, particularly the southeastern United States towards Mississippi or uh, Alabama into Georgia and South Carolina. Even a couple of events up here in Pennsylvania. It wouldn't surprise me on Thursday to see a couple of rogue, isolated, severe weather producers up maybe as far north as uh, Virginia, just kind of hanging out by themselves. But the main threat will be down here in uh, parts of Georgia, uh, you know, maybe uh, Florida, and then out into the Carolinas. This is mostly overnight, so I think overnight in uh, Alabama. But the main threat will be here on uh, Thursday. So that's all events. And then you look at the hail. Not very high at all, just a little bit in Georgia. Very low hail threat. And part of that is because when you get these lines of storms, the updrafts get a little bit, it's not as supportive of hail. You can see the wind threat very high here in the southeastern United States, much more widespread. And then the tornado threat very low as well on Thursday. So with that said, that's going to be my uh, general forecast. I'll outline these areas again. Again, Thursday or Wednesday, the best bet's going to be within this area. Thursday, it's kind of going to be within this area right here, particularly out here in southern Georgia into Florida, maybe a little bit farther south into Georgia. So if you haven't seen my radar time lapse, check that out up there. 10 years of radar. Subscribe below if you like these weather events. Share this with a friend. And again, the verdict, I'm not expecting anything major with these two events, but some embedded severe weather possible and some gusty winds, mostly a wind threat with this type of event. Nothing too serious in my opinion. So with that said, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you soon.